Hello and welcome to the Real Life Show, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Loretta. Remember, on this platform, we get to engage, interact, and learn from icons, gurus, trendsetters, trailblazers, difference makers, and of course, world changers. Now, entrepreneurs are essential to the global economy. They often ask tough questions and indeed find solutions to some of the world's problems and drive innovation. And although a clear set path has not been defined for one to become an entrepreneur, many young and old people alike are creating this path for themselves. Today, I'm so excited to be joined by a young person on today's episode of Youth Focus. And this is a young person that's not only creating jobs for many other young people in this country, but is also contributing to the development of the country. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Mark Jerry. Mark, good morning and welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to have you on this particular show and it's very, very humbling to see a young person like you that can actually share space with me today. Now, just getting straight into our conversation, for the people that are watching us, who is Mark Jerry? Tell us a, a bit about yourself. Where did you grow up fro from? Where, which school did you go to? And just a little bit about yourself. Okay, so uh, my name is Mark Jerry Jr. Mm -hmm. I was born in uh, Chipata, then uh, stayed a bit in um, Kushi, then moved to Central Province uh, to uh, Kathiri. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where I started my grade one at uh, Lukanda Basic School. Then from there, grade nine, I went to Serenja Boys. Serenja Boys, I uh, was there for only a year, grade 10, grade 11. I went to the Copper Belt um, at uh, Ndeke High School. And after I completed uh, I, grade 12, I think I was in 20, 2012, 2013, I got my first uh, job. I used to sell ice cream. Okay. Yeah, then after that, uh, uh, I was fired. You know, then that's how <laughs> I started my I'm tempted business. to ask, what, what got you fired? Uh, I still remember what got me fired. I think, uh, okay, I, I don't remember. <laughs> okay. I'll just assume. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, so, I got fired and uh, after that, that's when I started my business. Then uh, came to Lusaka, came mm -hmm. to Even Horn mm -hmm. uh, to study radiography. Okay. Continued with the business. Then after that, um, I was employed by Betkia Hospital where I worked for two years mm -hmm. and later on retired to continue with the business. Okay, yeah. so you, you, you studied radiography at Evelyn Horn yes. and then you ended up doing entrepreneurship. Yeah. So at what point in your life did you realize that you were born to be an entrepreneur? At what age did you start out to, to become an entrepreneur? Yeah, so uh, 2013 mm -hmm. uh, when I was selling ice cream after I was fired, uh, I've always loved fashion. So I remember going to Chisokone Market just to buy some shoes for myself. I used to love uh, shoes and all that. So I bought something for myself, then showed it to my friends. Then they loved the, the shoe. Mm -hmm. So uh, they were like, oh, you should sell me this shoe. Then from there, I, I sold the shoe. And a lot of them, I think three, four, wanted the same type of shoe. So I went back to Chisokone Market just to uh, get the same type of shoes and sell to the other guys. So from there I realized like, yo, uh, I can start selling. This can be a business. So I used to go into town now every day in the morning to look for stuff to resell on the other side of town. And this so, was on the copper belt? Yeah, this was on the copper belt. Okay. So it became a business from there on. I started getting uh, chinos, trousers, getting shirts mm -hmm. and reselling. Okay. Yeah, so so this business transitioned business even as you were getting into Evelyn Horn, did you continue or did you have to put it on hold and then continue after school? Yeah, so when I came to Evelyn Horn, I think I kind of like forgot about the business. But uh, I used to, uh, by then I could only afford clothes from Salaola, so that's second hand clothes. So mm -hmm. I used to go to uh, get second hand clothes for myself. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, people in school would like, oh, I love that. Can you sell me? So I started selling clothes that I bought for myself. Started selling clothes, started selling clothes. And I think I started even now, I thought, though, I thought of making it a business. So I started uh, going just to search for clothes for resale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I could go to Salaula, then at some point I could go to boutiques and resell in school. So, okay. Yeah, Interesting. Um, I, I, I've had conversations with many young people 
that would want to venture into something that you're doing okay and most of the times the conversation really revolves around capital how much did you start with when you started in 2013 uh that was like uh i think after i was fired so there was like a hundred quarter that was the only money uh, my boss was supposed to give me mm -hmm. so i think from the hundred quarter i spent about a 25 quarter to get a shoe and i sold it for 50 quarter so i think i started with uh i i started with the, the same 25 quarter from there that's when i started developing my skills as a Wow. As an entrepreneur. Wow, 25 yeah. quarter and here you are. Yeah. Okay, so now Mark, you not until recent you've been making global headlines <laughs> and I think that's um, an achievement really. And obviously this is because of years of hard work, de determination and yeah. focus. Just run us through how you've managed to stay consistent and afloat for you to get to where you are now because you're you now own three stores in super in big malls. So how has this journey been? Well, I think it's been it's been exciting. Um, I think from a very from a very young age, mm -hmm. the, the first time I came to Lusaka and I looked at the malls, and you know, most of the stores were owned by uh, well, no, not our people, black people. Yeah. And I always wanted to be at at the mall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think I was preparing and I always wanted to be at the mall. So. Uh, it's been an exciting journey mm -hmm. um, from 2013 and there was a time, you know, I stopped business for almost a year because I lost uh, quite a number of, of, of monies. So, you know, I, I almost quit business for, for some time because I thought like, yo, this doesn't work. Yeah. And then, you know, I got a job and then after, you know, I still felt like there was a way I can make this work. So, you know, I went back and, uh, you know, um, now we have three stores. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, good to know that you've actually mentioned about you losing money. Well, not yeah. good to know, but it, yeah. it drives me to the question um, in terms of challenges. Yeah. Like what challenge, obviously there's not going to be, it's not going to be smooth. Every business yeah. is going to face challenges. So what challenges really have you encountered in these years and how have you managed to stay afloat and just mitigate and find solutions to these challenges? Well, uh, I think one of them was um, the time I was in school. Mm -hmm. I think I gave out a lot of things on, on credit. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, people didn't pay me back. Yeah. So I lost the business because most of my stuff, I, I gave it on credit. I think that was one of the challenges. And when we opened the store, um, you know, the COVID, uh, you know, borders were closed. We couldn't get stock. And uh, yeah, so those are some of the challenges. And also, when I opened the store, you know, finding people to work with, I think that's a challenge, finding people that you can trust with a lot of stock and a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, do you love what you do? Yeah, definitely. At, at what point did you, because obviously you, for you to go to Evelyn Horn and study radiology, you yeah. had something in mind, you wanted to be a radiographer, yeah. but then there's this transition. So at what point did you realize that you were born for entrepreneurship? Uh, I think from a very young age, I've always wanted to be rich. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I've always wanted to make money. I've always wanted to have a good life. So, well, I mean, after I started radiography, and I saw, you know, uh, I wanted to be the best at whatever I, it is that, you know, I wanted to do. So, mm -hmm. you know, I looked at radiography and where it was taking me. And, uh, you know, I looked at what other things can I do for me to be, you know, obviously to make a bit of some money as well. Yeah, so um, I, I realized, you know, I could, like from the start, it wasn't really a business, me mm -hmm. going into clothes. Mm -hmm. It was just something that I loved. So uh, I went into entrepreneurship, well, not necessarily because of the money, but because of the love that I had for, for, for fashion and stuff. So mm -hmm. I, I went into, uh, entrepreneurship because of the love and then the money came in interesting yeah. interesting the money it's always about the money yeah there's the money but uh, you know there's always i think if you go into entrepreneurship just because of the money mm -hmm. it might be very difficult for you to make the money but if you go in it uh, because you love what you're doing even the money it's easy because there are times i didn't make the monies mm -hmm. there are times i lost all the monies at some point but I still went back as because, you know, I just love shopping for clothes. So okay. it's something that I do, it's part of me. So it was easy for me to do it. 
interesting interesting let's talk about mac food um how how did you how easy was it for you to really set up and just become you know a brand because i think macford has is now really a big brand and people are getting to know about it how how easy was it for you to set up and how many young people are employed by you um so the setup i don't know yeah i think it was well kind of easy so the first store that we opened was uh, in town mm -hmm. it was a shared store okay. so there was a lady on the other side selling uh, ladies clothes and me on the other side selling uh, men's clothes. Mm -hmm. Then after, kind of like the business was booming and uh, you know, the ladies told me, no, you have to give me my space back. I, I don't know uh, a reason to that. So um, by then I had retired. So I was like, yo, I want to focus on the business. Yeah. So just after I retired, she told me she wanted that space back. And that's what like moved us to go to the mall. So that's the first time we went to the mall uh, opened at uh, Novari Great North Mall. Mm -hmm. By then, it was a big store and there was just a few, you know, stuff Shops, here yeah. and there. Yeah. You know, in the store, there was like a few, we had a few stock mm -hmm. here and there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I think from there we pushed, I think it was less than six months. From there, I had raised enough funds to open another store. Yeah, Amazing. and um, yeah, um, finding the people that I work with, I kind of, First of all, I try to create relationships with the people that I work with. Yeah, so even the people that I uh, work with, it's not like they like work for me. I, most of the people that I work with are entrepreneurs. Yeah. Like if you go to Novari Mall, I've got uh, my guys that I work with. These are people that are doing their own things. So I love working with people that are interested in learning mm -hmm. than people that are just interested in getting money at the end of the day. So. Um, I think I have the most creative minds that I work with. That's why it's even been easy to, you know, um, uh, be successful at this point because of the kind of people that I work with. Amazing. I, yeah. I, I just, I'm just so moved at how one setback in your life yeah. led to one big opening. And yeah. I think that's something that most people overlook. You know, people get to face challenges and they give up. But yeah. seeing that you have a re very resilient spirit and you pushed on and kept going and that you have an amazing team that's working with you. I think that's something that's very motivating. Now, what motivates you, Mark? Why do you get up every day in the morning just to ensure that Mark Ford is running? What mot what's the motivation behind that? What's the motivation? Uh, that really motivates me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That really motivates me. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, I'm always working hard to be better than I was yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm always working hard. And, you know, when I achieve something, I always know I can do better than what I've done. So yeah. I think I'm just looking forward, like, yo, what, what else can I do? So every time I do something, I always try to do better. So every time I work up, I'm trying to do better than I, what I did yesterday. So I think that's, that's basically my motivation. Amazing. Yeah. Do you have any inspira inspirators? Do you have any people that you look up to, maybe in the fashion industry, maybe in the entrepreneurship world? Are there any people that you just look at and say, wow, I want to be that, like that person? Yeah, I think uh, entrepreneurs, um, I would look at um, uh, Vusi Tembekwayo, mm -hmm. I would look at uh, Benjamin Katuria, um, look at uh, Bill Gates, you know, I think Warren Buffett. I, I do read a lot of books and listen to a lot of them yeah. just to get the inspiration. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. So um, obviously you are not, this is something that you, you, you've done, you've built on your own. This is not something that way I can say, you know what, this guy is privileged, all right? Yeah. It's something that you, you built and it took consistency and hard work. What's your advice to, I want you to give advice maybe to a younger you. What would yeah. you tell a younger Mark at this particular moment? That's, probably one wants to venture entrepreneur into entrepreneurship but mm -hmm. they have the second gaze in what would you say to them um i think to tell somebody somebody i don't know if it's the younger me that it is possible and you know the education is is very important mm -hmm. you know entrepreneurship you have to be educated you have to get the education 
you know, uh, all those years, I think about nine years, I was hassling in the streets, I was selling, you know, that was part of the education. You know, they call it street smart. Yeah. You know, so, you know, you need to be street smart, you need to be, you know, school smart. All that is, is important. It's, it's a process, you know, and you just have to be patient with it. You just have to, you know, grow, learn, you know, and, you know, eventually you, you have a chance at, at being successful. So, you know, value education, you know, and uh, read books, you know, attend seminars, all that is, is very important to your growth as an entrepreneur. I remember I said something on my page the other day saying, you can't uh, grow a business that's bigger than you. So mm -hmm. a business is just a reflection that's of powerful. who you are, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. if you want to grow as a business person, you have to grow you first. So, you know, education, uh, you have to grow you, you have to focus on you and all that. You know, you're going to have a chance at being successful. Amazing, I really love, I love your thoughts. I love what you're saying. I totally yeah. agree with everything. Um, yeah. Aside Mark Ford, is there any other business that you're running? Um, currently, I'm, I'm just focused on, on, on Markford. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? Mm, in the next 10 years? That's a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, real estate is, uh, I think, one of the businesses that I'm likely to go into. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, go into real estate and also, you know, have maybe mark food in, in in other countries okay yeah okay maybe you, as we are wrapping up your word of advice to anyone that's watching young and old at home what's your advice to them what should they take away from you uh, i think is um you know find something that you love and you know uh, just do something that you love i think that's that's advice if you want to you know um even if it's a career or something you know do something that you love the focus should be doing something that you love and be happy and uh, you know money should be second it's while, while you're trying to go into entrepreneurship let it not be only for the monies you know go into a field that you love you know and yeah you might have you might have uh, a chance at you know becoming successful yeah yeah okay i i really love and share into the, that thought i think most people uh would see you um thriving into this particular in this particular business and they would want to venture and say I want to be like Mark yeah. without having the passion and I think it's very important that people have passion and love what they do before they even decide to do whatever they want to do and yeah. I totally agree with that yeah so ladies and gentlemen you heard it for yourselves that was the CEO of Mark Ford's clothing and um, he's a young person that's obviously doing incredible stuff in this uh, country Zambia so do follow him on his uh, social media pages. He'll just quickly tell us his uh, Facebook and Twitter handles. Okay, yeah, so you can uh, follow Mark Ford's collection. Mm -hmm. There's uh, Mark Ford's collection, Lewanika Mo, Mark Ford's collection, East Park Mo, and Mark Ford's. Okay, so yeah. you... And also on Instagram, uh, Mark Ford's collection. Amazing, amazing. So yeah. please, if you're looking for quality clothing, do uh, find time to pass through Mark Ford clothing and you are assured of getting that quality boot that you want. Uh, this has been Youth Focus with me, Loretta. Join me next week, same time, same place. Please and view in. Yeah. Ooh, I'm freezing. Hi there, this is uh, Mark Jerry, CEO of uh, Mark Ford's Collection. Continue watching the real life show.